Scribal abbreviations or sigla singular, siglum, are the abbreviations used by ancient and medieval scribes writing in Latin, and later in Greek and Old Norse. In modern manuscript editing substantive and mechanical, sigla are the symbols used to indicate the source manuscript e.g. variations in text between different such manuscripts and to identify the copyists of a work. See critical apparatus. History Abbreviated writing, using sigla, arose partly from the limitations of the workable nature of the materials stone, metal, parchment, etc. employed in record making and partly from their availability. Thus, lapidaries, engravers, and copyists made the most of the available writing space. Scribal abbreviations were infrequent when writing materials were plentiful, but by the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, writing materials were scarce and costly. During the Roman Republic, several abbreviations, known as sigla plural of siglum, equals symbol or abbreviation, were in common use in inscriptions, and they increased in number during the Roman Empire. Additionally, in this period shorthand entered general usage. The earliest known Western shorthand system was that employed by the Greek historian Xenophon in the Memoir of Socrates, and it was called Note Socrates. In the late Roman Republic, the Tyronean notes were developed possibly by Marcus Tullius Tiro, Cicero's amanuensis, in 63 BC to record information with fewer symbols. Tyronean notes include a shorthand, syllabic alphabet notation different from the Latin minuscule hand and square and rustic capital letters. The notation was akin to modern stenographic writing systems. It used symbols for whole words or word roots and grammatical modifier marks, and it could be used to write either whole passages in shorthand or only certain words. In medieval times, the symbols to represent words were widely used, and the initial symbols, as few as 140 according to some sources, were increased to 14,000 by the Carolingians, who used them in conjunction with other abbreviations. However, the alphabet notation had a murky existence. C. Burnett, as it was often associated with witchcraft and magic, and it was eventually forgotten. Interest in it was rekindled by the Archbishop of Canterbury Thomas Becket in the 12th century and later in the 15th century, when it was rediscovered by Johannes Trithemus, abbot of the Benedictine Abbey of Sponheim, in a psalm written entirely in Tyronean shorthand and a Ciceronian lexicon, which was discovered in a Benedictine monastery to learn the Tyronean note system, scribes required formal schooling in some 4,000 symbols, this later increased to some 5,000 symbols and then to some 13,000 in the medieval period 4th to 15th centuries AD, the meanings of some characters remain uncertain. Sigla were mostly used in lapidary inscriptions, in some places and historical periods such as medieval Spain scribal abbreviations were overused to the extent that some are indecipherable. Forms <laughs> 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 The abbreviations were not constant but changed from region to region. Scribal abbreviations increased in usage and reached their height in the Carolingian Renaissance 8th to 10th centuries. The most common abbreviations, called note communes, were used across most of Europe, but others appeared in certain regions. In legal documents, legal abbreviations, called note juris, appear but also capricious abbreviations, which scribes manufactured ad hoc to avoid repeating names and places in a given document. Scribal abbreviations can be found in epigraphy, sacred and legal manuscripts, written in Latin or in a vernacular tongue but less frequently and with fewer abbreviations, either calligraphically or not. In epigraphy, common abbreviations were comprehended in two observed classes. The abbreviation of a word to its initial letter. The abbreviation of a word to its first consecutive letters or to several letters, from throughout the word, both forms of abbreviation are called suspensions, as the scribe suspends the writing of the word. A separate form of abbreviation is by contraction, and was mostly a Christian usage for sacred words, nomina sacra, non-Christian sigla usage usually limited the number of letters the abbreviation comprised and omitted no intermediate letter. One practice was rendering an overused, formulaic phrase only as a siglum, dm for dis manibus, dedicated to the mains, ihs from the first three letters of iisu, and rip for requiescat in pace, rest in peace, because the long-form written usage of the abbreviated phrase, by itself, was rare. 
According to Trabe, these abbreviations are not really meant to lighten the burden of the scribe but rather to shroud in reverent obscurity the holiest words of the Christian religion. Another practice was repeating the abbreviation's final consonant a given number of times to indicate a group of as many persons, AVG denoted Augustus, thus, AVGG denoted Augusti duo. However, lapidaries took typographic liberties with that rule, and instead of using cos to denote consulibus duobus, they invented the CCSS form. Still, when occasion required referring to three or four persons, the complex doubling of the final consonant yielded to the simple plural siglum. To that effect, a vinculum overbar above a letter or a letter set also was so used, becoming a universal medieval typographic usage. Likewise the tilde, tilde an undulated, curved end line, came into standard late medieval usage. Besides the tilde and macron marks, above and below letters, modifying cross bars and extended strokes were employed as scribal abbreviation marks, mostly for prefixes and verb, noun and adjective suffixes. The typographic abbreviations should not be confused with the phrasal abbreviations, i.e. id est, that is, loc, cit, loco citato, in the passage already cited, viz, vid licit, namely, that is to say, in other words, formed with v and the yog like glyph, the siglum for the suffix et and the conjunction et and etc. Moreover, besides scribal abbreviations, ancient texts also contained variant typographic characters, including ligatures, e.g., a, o, etc., the long s, and the half r, resembling an Arabic numeral two, two. The u and v characters originated as scribal variants for their respective letters, likewise the i and j pair. Modern publishers printing Latin language works replace variant typography and sigla with full form Latin spellings, the convention of using u and i for vowels and v and j for consonants is a late typographic development. Topic. Scribal sigla in modern use Topic Latin script Some ancient and medieval sigla are still used in English and other European languages. The Latin ampersand and replaces the conjunction and in English, et in Latin and French, and y in Spanish but its use in Spanish is frowned upon, since the y is already smaller and easier to write. The Tyronean sign, resembling the digit 7, 7 represents the conjunction et and is written only to the x height. In current Irish language usage, the siglum denotes the conjunction agus and. Other scribal abbreviations in modern typographic use are the percentage sign percent from the Italian per cento per hundred, the per mil sign per mil from the Italian per mil per thousand, the pound sign pound and hash, all descending from or lb librum and the dollar sign dollar, which possibly derives from the Spanish word peso. The commercial at symbol at, originally denoting at the rate, price of, is a ligature derived from the English preposition at. From the 1990s, its use outside commerce became widespread, as part of email addresses. Typographically, the ampersand and, representing the word at, is a space-saving ligature of the letters e and t, its component graphemes. Since the establishment of movable type printing in the 15th century, founders have created many such ligatures for each set of record type font to communicate much information with fewer symbols. Moreover, during the Renaissance 14th to 17th centuries, when ancient Greek language manuscripts introduced that tongue to Western Europe, its scribal abbreviations were converted to ligatures in imitation of the Latin scribal writing to which readers were accustomed. Later, in the 16th century, when the culture of publishing included Europe's vernacular languages, Greco-Roman scribal abbreviations disappeared, an ideologic deletion ascribed to the anti-Latinist Protestant Reformation 1517 to 1648. The common abbreviation Xmas, for Christmas, is a remnant of an old scribal abbreviation that substituted the Greek letter chi, chi resembling Latin X and representing the first letter in the Greek word for Christ, Christos for the word Christ. Church Slavonic After the invention of printing, manuscript copying abbreviations continued to be employed in Church Slavonic and are still in use in printed books as well as on icons and inscriptions. 
Many common long roots and nouns describing sacred persons are abbreviated and written under the special diacritic symbol titlo, as shown in the figure at the right. That corresponds to the nomina sacra Latin, sacred names, tradition of using contractions for certain frequently occurring names in Greek ecclesiastical texts. However, sigla for personal nouns are restricted to good beings and the same words, when referring to bad beings, are spelled out, for example, while God, in the sense of the one true God is abbreviated as BG. God, referring to false gods is spelled out. Likewise, the word for angel is generally abbreviated as agil, but the word for angels is spelled out for performed by evil angels in Psalm chapter 77. Topic. Abbreviation types Adriano Capelli's Lexicon Abbreviatorum, enumerates the various medieval brachiographic signs found in Latin and Italian Vulgar texts, which originate from the Roman sigla, a symbol to express a word, and Tyronean notes. Quite rarely, abbreviations did not carry marks to indicate that an abbreviation has occurred, if they did, they were often copying errors. For example, e.g is written with periods, but modern terms, such as PC, may be written in uppercase. It should be noted that the original manuscripts were not written in a modern sans serif or serif font but in Roman capitals, rustic, uncial, insular, Carolingian or blackletter styles. For more, refer to Western calligraphy or a beginner's guide. Additionally, the abbreviations employed varied across Europe. In Nordic texts, for instance, two runes were used in text written in the Latin alphabet, which are, for fe, cattle, goods, and, for mar, man. Capelli divides abbreviations into six overlapping categories by suspension troncamento, by contraction contrazone, with independent meaning con significato proprio, with relative meaning con significato relativo, by superscript letters per letter sovrapost by convention segni conventionali topic suspension suspended terms are those of which only the first part is written and the last part is substituted by a mark which can be of two types general indicating there has been an abbreviation but not how the marks are placed above or across the ascender of the letters. The final three of the series are not like and are used in papal or regal documents. Specific Indicating that a truncation has occurred. The third case is a stylistic alternative found in several fonts, here Andron Unicode chart extended D, the largest class of suspensions consists of single letters standing in for words that begin with that letter. A dot at the baseline after a capital letter may stand for a title if it is used such as in front of names or a person's name in medieval legal documents. However, not all sigla use the beginning of the word. For plural words, the siglum is often doubled, f. Quote. Topic. Freighteren. Ff. Fraters. Tripled sigla often stand for three. DDD equals Domini Trace. Letters lying on their sides, or mirrored backwards, often indicate female titles, but a mirrored C stands generally for con or contra, the latter sometimes with a macron above. To avoid confusion with abbreviations and numerals, the latter are often written with a bar above. In some contexts, however, numbers with a line above indicate that number is to be multiplied by a thousand, and several other abbreviations also have a line above them, such as cur, Greek letters chi plus rho. Topic: <laughs> Christus or IHS. Jesus. Starting in the 8th or the 9th century, single-letter sigla grew less common and were replaced by longer, less ambiguous sigla, with bars above them. Topic. Contraction Abbreviations by contraction have one or more middle letters omitted. They were often represented with a general mark of abbreviation above, such as a line above. 
They can be divided into two subtypes. Pure A pure contraction keeps only the first one or more and last one or more letters but not intermediate letters. Special cases arise when a contraction keeps only the first and last letter of a word, resulting in a two-letter sigla. Mixed impure. A mixed contraction keeps one or more intermediate letters of the word that is abridged. Topic marks with independent meaning Such marks inform the reader of the identity of the missing part of the word without affecting independent of the meaning. Some of them may be interpreted as alternative contextual glyphs of their respective letters. The straight or curved macron above a letter means that an n or m is missing. A remnant can be seen in Spanish where an n with a tilde new is used for in Visigoth texts before the 9th century, however, a dot is placed above the macron to indicate m, and the same mark without a dot meant n. The line with a dot became the general mark after the 9th century in Visigoth texts. A mark, resembling the Arabic numeral 9 or a mirrored C in Gothic texts, is one of the oldest signs and can be found in the texts of Marcus Valerius Probus and Tyronean notes with the same meaning as con. Another mark, similar to a bold comma or a superscript 9, placed after the letter on the median line, represented as or os, generally at the end of the word, being the nominative case affix of the second declension, sometimes as or simply s. The apostrophe used today originated from various marks in sigla, which caused its current use in elision, such as in the Saxon genitive. A wave-like or omicron-like mark stands for a missing r rhotic consonant or ra. Sometimes, a similar wave-like mark at the end of a word indicated a missing a or syllable ending in a. This is, however, a coincidence, as one of the marks stems from a small r-like mark and the other from an a-like one. In later texts, it became a diaresis two dots, or a broken line. A mark, resembling the Arabic numeral 2 and placed on the median line after the letter, indicates tur or er, which occurs generally at the end of the word. Alternatively it could stand for ter or er but not at the end of the word. Nordic languages, such as Old English, have a lightning bolt-like mark for words ending in er. The r rotunda with a cut generally stood for rum, but it could also stand for a truncation after the letter r. A last mark, which could either be the Tyronean note or the ampersand and, was used with equal frequency as the conjunction et end or as et in any part of the word. The symbol at the end of a word indicates the enclitic k end. A corruption occurs in some manuscripts between it and the us, os mark. Topic. Marks with relative meaning The meaning of the marks depends on the letter on which they appear. A macron not fully above the character but crossing the descender or ascender b, b, bri, b, e, r, u, C with a link on the right cum con c e n above quantum d d d der u d across d not equals f h h h, h a e c hoc her vel ul l m above mem moon n above non none crossed horizontally not danish o oblit p per par por P above pre pre alternatively a mark similar to us comma above but with a small spiral glyph could be used for this meaning and it is also valid above the letter Q P P above or P P below propter papa Q key and in Italy K but in England quam quia Q above que Q Q above or Q Q below quoque Q tilde above and line below quam T, ter, tem, ten, u, v, above, ven, vir, vit, a dot, two dots, comma and dot different from a semicolon, and the Arabic numeral three-like mark were generally at the end of a word on the baseline. After b, they mean us, semicolon-like and also could mean et. After q, they form the conjunction k, meaning, end, but attached to the end of the last word, with semicolon-like and the q could be omitted. Semicolon like, in Lombard documents, above s meant cis. The dot above median line on an h, hoc. Dot above u, ut or uti. The could mean est, or after a, e, u vowels meant m not us or a, if after an o it meant nem. In certain papers the mark can be confused with a cut r rotunda, handwritten for like. 
A dot to the left and right of a letter gave the following meanings: e, e, est, i, i, id est, n, n, enum, q, q, quasi, s, s, silicet, t, t, tune, quantum, etiam. A diagonal line, often hooked, mark crossing nearly all the letters gives a different meaning. Commonly a missing er, r, re. Variants of which were placed above and were like, tilde crossing a sender and similar to the us mark. These, used in various combinations, allow for various uses giving additional meanings. Two like mark, after a q, q quia. After 15th century alone et being similar to and alone with line above etiam. After u and a at the end of a word u, a, m, after s, s, et or ed. Topic. Stacked or superscript letters A superscript letter generally referred to the letter omitted, but, in some instances, as in the case of vowel letters, it could refer to a missing vowel combined with the letter R, before or after it. It is only in some English dialects that the letter R before another consonant largely silent and the preceding vowel is R colored. However, a, i, and o above g meant g, g and a, g, g and i and g, g and o respectively. Although in English, the g is silent in g n, but in other languages, it is pronounced. Vowel letters above q meant q plus vowel, q, 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 q. On r, r, regula, O on M, M, modivowels were the most common superscripts, but consonants could be placed above letters without ascenders, the most common were C, E, G, N. A cut L above an N, N, meant Nile for instance. Topic. Convention marks These marks are non-alphabetic letters carrying a particular meaning. Several of them continue in modern usage, as in the case of monetary symbols. In Unicode, they are referred to as letter-like glyphs. Additionally, several authors are of the view that the Roman numerals themselves were, for example, nothing less than abbreviations of the words for those numbers. Other examples of symbols still in some use are alchemical and zodiac symbols, which were, in any case, employed only in alchemy and astrology texts, which made their appearance beyond that special context rare. Other In addition to the signs used to signify abbreviations, medieval manuscripts feature some glyphs that are now uncommon but were not sigla. Many more ligatures were used to reduce the space occupied, a characteristic that is particularly prominent in blackletter scripts. Some letter variants such as R rotunda, long S and uncial or insular variants insular G, Claudian letters were in common use, as well as letters derived from other scripts such as Nordic runes, thorn, equals th, and ev, equals dh. An illuminated manuscript would feature miniatures, decorated initials or litera notabilior, which later resulted in the bicamerality of the script case distinction. Typographic replication Various typefaces have been designed to allow scribal abbreviations and other archaic glyphs to be replicated in print. They include, "...record type", which was first developed in the 1770s to publish Doomsday Book and was fairly widely used for the publication of medieval records in Britain until the end of the 19th century. Unicode encoding In the Unicode Standard v. 5.1 the 4th of April 2008, 152 medieval and classical glyphs were given specific locations outside of the private use area. Specifically, they are located in the charts. Combining diacritical mark supplement. 26 characters. Latin extended additional. 10 characters. Supplemental punctuation. 15 characters, ancient symbols, 12 characters, and especially, Latin extended D, 89 characters. These consist in both precomposed characters and modifiers for other characters, called combining diacritical marks, such as writing in latex or using overstrike in MS Word. Characters are, the smallest components of written language that have semantic value, but glyphs are, 
the shapes that characters can have when they are rendered or displayed. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Examples of 8th and 9th century Latin abbreviations across Europe. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> See also Acronym Claudian letters List of acronyms List of classical abbreviations List of medieval abbreviations Macron section Other uses Paleography TextSpeak, a similar phenomenon in modern text messaging Typographic ligature Paleographic letter variants <laughs>